Boys basketball coming up next as the Highlands will take on Campbell County. The IH sports crew on hand. That is Cameron behind our camera and Sam working our board and myself, Rick, on our play-by-play -play tonight. The Highlanders lose last night at Powell 56-52. Terrible first quarter start for the Highlanders, falling behind 23-8 in the first quarter. We then finally fought all the way back to tie it at 47 before Campbell County, excuse me, before Powell got the final two baskets to pick up that four-point victory over the Highlanders last night. If I told you these numbers from last night, the Highlanders only made nine of 50, I'm sorry, 19 of 50 shots from the field. Nine of 28 from three-point range. So an off night for the Highlanders, and we only went to the foul line nine times. That's not part of the formula for success for the Highlanders. We need to get to the line 18 or 20 times for us to have a chance to be successful against other teams. So we did not do that last night. The Highlanders have a victory over this Campbell County team. We have to go all the way back to uh, November 26th at Union County where the Highlanders beat Campbell County 77 to 55. Now we'll get the starters for Campbell County. Number two is Devin Jones. Number 11 is Spencer Boshears. Number What's that number? Number 24 is Bryson Horton. And number 24, John Long. 55, rather, is John Long. I'm not sure that's the number he's got on. Yes, it is. I still missed one of them, but I will pick it up when the game starts here. The Highlanders 9-2 and two on the season, 1-1 one one in district play. Head coach Jordan Jeffers, assistants Derek Boshears, Grant Markin. The Campbell County Cougars coached by Ernie Clawson. Number 24 getting the start is Gray Totley Jr. Number one is Scott Jeffers. He's also a junior. Number five, a senior, Dalton Pruitt. Number 12, a senior, Luke West. And the final starter, also a senior, number 22, Trey Mora. Trey, if you're counting, and I'll forget to do this, but my totals, and I'm not the official, by the way, but Trey needs uh, 10 points tonight to go over to reach the 2,400 point mark in his career. Luke West, by the way, went over 800 points last night. I think he's got 801 on his career. Needs 200 more, and I think, quite frankly, the only thing that keep him from getting 200 more points on the season would be an injury. So I think, and I'm not knocking on wood, I'm not jinxing him. I think Luke could hit the 1,000-point club this year. At center circle, the tip up, it's controlled by John Long and the Campbell County Cougars. Their basket to our left, Highlander basket to our right. Highlander's in white, Campbell County in a dark gray. Driving right side, they kick it over on the wing. Needing help, posting up right box. That's Nate Walden, number 14. His shot is blocked, and the Highlanders, with that takeaway, will have their first offensive possession. Pass shovels over, all the way in the left corner. Now back outside to Pruitt, to West. They back off, might should have shot the three. Instead, the Highlanders work it to the left corner. The pass is deflected, and Campbell County knocks it off with Dalton Pruitt. Possession going over to the Cougars. Just underway in the boys' contest. Each team has had an offensive possession coming up short. Campbell County, they get the pass over to Devin Jones. Jones gives it up at the foul line, a 15-foot jumper there by Nate Walden. Campbell County, the early 2-0 lead. Hunter's trying to answer this trip. On the right wing, that's Luke West. Turns, drives down the paint, pull up fadeaway 10-footer is no good. Moore tried to keep it alive. The outlet pass. Highlanders five for it. Scott Jeffers going to save it. Nice hustle. First, Dalton Pruitt, then Scott Jeffers to hustle down and save the ball. Over on the right wing. That's West. Top of the key. It goes to Jeffers. He stops. Pops the three. Scott Jeffers gives the Highlanders our first lead of the game at 3 2. Highlanders man to man, half court D. Jones has the basketball. 
Gets it down to Walden. Walden goes inside. They try to post Boshears. Boshears chases it down in the left corner. They dribble back outside. In the paint, that's long, long. Tosses it out on the wing. Driving, knocked away from, by West from behind. It will be Cougar basketball in inbound. Bryson Horton. Horton left baseline. Hunters again, they stay man. And almost a steal by Jeffers. It is still Cougar basketball. This time all the way out to the left corner where they'll inbound. The lob comes into both years. Drives against two defenders. Blocked from the side by Trey Moore and the official along the baseline. Calls Trey with the foul. His first, team first. We're underway, six minutes, 12 seconds left in the first quarter. Going to the line, this is Spencer Boshears shooting two free throws. The first is no good. It's still a 3-2 Highlander margin. Second toss, Boshears, that one is good. We're all tied at three. Camel County, they'll back into a half-court man. Over to Pruitt. The pass deflected. West comes up with it. Steps behind the free throw line. 17-foot jump shot comes up short. Campbell County with the ball. I want to watch the next time the Highlanders are back on offense to see about the defense by the Cougars. That's long. Drives in along the baseline. Needs help. Kicks it back outside. From the top of the key. Driving. Picking up the dribble. Ball's deflected. The Cougars save it. And opening. Comes back out to Boshears. Deep off the right wing shot is no good. Mora has the rebound. Trey against two defenders. Kicks it over to Jeffers down in the corner. It has that opening drive. Dishes to Todd. A little 10 footer by Gray Todd right in front of the basket. The Highlanders now five. Campbell County three. Too quick for me to tell you about the Cougar defense. I'll still watch for it on our next possession. Both shears off the right wing, long three, spun out, no good. Mora, another defensive rebound. Ahead to West, up the right side, lost the handle on the ball. What I want to watch about the Cougar defense, I really think it's a box and one. It's a box and one by, and I just got a text in from Dustin. Dustin, I was going, I've been watching for box and one. You must be at home watching the game on the IH Sports Network. Thanks for tuning in and for everybody watching Highlander Sports tonight. Cougar basketball. Highlanders continue to play man-to-man on their defensive end. Driving and turning the corner. Up off the glass, won't go. Getting the rebound, second try. Up off the glass, that was John Long. Long is tied it at five each. West passing on the three over to Pruitt. He'll drive down the paint, shuffles it up. Off the glass, it's no good. Cougar basketball deflected away. Gray Todd, 15-foot jumper, long rebound taken by Campbell County. They'll lob it all the way up to the right corner. That's Bo Shears. Cut off on the drive. Back out to Walden. Walden quick pass goes inside and long with a pump fake. He has that little hook from in front. The Cougars back on top, 7-5. A little more than four minutes left in the first quarter. And the pass, Jeffers has it stolen. Driving the length of the court and running over Jeffers. Hup, they'll call a charge. Good thing the official thought about that a little bit. Probably, once again, they're down there up, up here. I would have called Scott on the blocking foul. But, you know, like I said, Sam's heard me say this a dozen times, you know. Uh, I call it the way I see it. Braden Brummett for the Highlanders checking in. He joins Mora. Uh, Caleb Woodward now on the floor, number 25, along with Pruitt and West. Bounce pass inside to Woodward. Had a soft touch off the glass, could not get the shot to roll in. Over to Boshears from the right wing. Steps around his defender, shot was no good. Pruitt will be credited with the rebound. Snaps the pass ahead, Luke West, his three off the right wing. Shot is no good, batted around. Camel County with the ball, this is a three on three break. He comes back outside, deep off the left wing. The shot no good. Woodward the rebound for the Highlanders. Caleb Woodward a junior. Braden Brumman a senior for the Highlanders. Snap pass over to Wood. Excuse me, that was Brumman. 
Back outside. All the way to West in the left corner. Brummett kicks a quick pass inside. Woodward reversing the layup off the right side. Caleb Woodward has tied our score at seven each. That comes with two minutes and about 52 seconds to go in the first quarter. I understand the man. Pump fake. That got more in the air. Driving in and more comes back. Blocks the shot of Walden from behind. Quick outlet pass. This is West driving up the left side with the layup. Good. Luke West. Two-point advantage, Highlanders. Definitely picking up at midcourt. Luke West outside on Horton. Little handoff goes to Walden. Walden steps behind the screen. Long three is an air ball. Highlanders let it go. And possession going to home team Highlanders. Again, Caleb Woodward, Trey Moore, Luke West, Dalton Pruitt, and Braden Brummett for Coach Jeffers. Two-point Highlander lead, 9-7. Two minutes, eight seconds to go first quarter. Pruitt with the basketball. Bounce pass to Woodward. A little handback goes to Pruitt. Ball out to West. Cut off on his drive over to Pruitt. He steps back, launches a three. Bang. Dalton Pruitt. The senior with a three-pointer. Highlander's 12. Seven advantage. Five-point lead. Cougars with the basketball. Horton with the ball. Gives it up to Jones out on the right wing. Cut off by Pruitt on the drive. Still works down toward the baseline. Little shovel pass comes back outside. High shot off the bass won't go. And the block, no, they call it jump ball. The jump ball gives possession to the Highlanders. That was Trey Moore going up and actually, uh, let's see, that was Will Lester on the shot attempt. So he blocked Lester. I put down on my stat sheet as a block for Trey. And the pass intended on the right side for Wes. It's off his hand. It might have been tipped by the Cougar player in front of it, but it, was, it still goes down as a turnover on our stat sheet. A hand back Horton to Jones. Gave it up, got it back long. Left hand three, shot is no good. Rebound. Camel County, they work it back outside. Walden with, nope, that's not Walden, that's Horton over there with the basketball on the right wing. Turns a corner, drives to the baseline, fade away 15 footer, won't go. Ball is tipped up, and Caleb Woodward with the rebound, and then the outlet pass intending it for West, and it's behind Luke. He has to come back and reach in for the foul. First personal on West, second Highlander team foul, 49 seconds, remaining first quarter. Camel County takes a timeout. Now let's take a quick 30-second break here. 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. A 12-7 Highlander lead. Final 49 seconds of the first period. A 12-7 Highlander lead. Camel County with the ball. Left baseline. The entry pass comes in. Soft turnaround jumper long is no good. More of the rebound once again. Trey outside. Backs into the foul line. That fadeaway 15-footer is off the mark. It's no good. Rebound goes to Campbell County. That is Horton pushing it. Cut off by Brummett. Ball reverses back outside. The drive down the paint, no good. Fighting for the ball. That is Trey, and he is fouled. John Long, the foul for Campbell County. His first, second Campbell County team foul. He comes with 24 seconds to go in the first quarter. Caleb Woodward out as uh, Gray Todd checks back in. So he, Caleb done a good job scoring two points at the time there and was able to give Gray a nice breather on the bench. Hunters with the ball, 13 seconds to go in the first. Quick pack over to Luke, drives along the baseline, shovels it in to Brummett, his shot up, yes, counted. As Braden got the roll, and he'll go to the line for the first Highlander free throw of the game. Now Scott Jeffers checks in for Trey Moore. Final six seconds. So Trey's not getting much of a break. He'll have the minute between quarters and the six seconds there as Braden Brummett tries to wrap up a three-point opportunity. 
The toss comes up short. Campbell County with the ball. They'll kick it ahead. This is Jones. Jones passed the three, now comes back to it. And ahead of the buzzer, yes, count it by Devin and Jones. Late for three-pointer by Jones. Makes it a 14-10 game. The Highlanders did everything except deny Jones that time. After one quarter, it's Highlanders 14, Campbell County 10. We step aside. We'll return second quarter after this message. When we get to halftime and I start doing the first half scoring, I can already tell you that, gee whiz, my numbers are off on Campbell County already. So I managed to do that in the first quarter tonight. I didn't even wait to the, near the end of the game to miss some scores that I should put on my sheet. We'll begin second quarter action with our Highlanders leading Campbell County 14 to 10. It will be Cougar basketball. Their basket again to our left. They wear the dark gray uniforms, the Highlanders in the white uniforms. Scott, Jeffers, Luke, West, Dalton, Pruitt, Gray, Todd, and Trey Moore on the court. The original starting five for the Highlanders. Quick pass goes inside. Jeffers reaching in, tried to steal it, could not. Reverses back outside. Long rebound. The Cougars get it. Gray, Todd with a block. Knocked that one away from Horton. Long outlet pass. West, his pass is then deflected. And Pruitt will pick it up in the backcourt. Highlanders get a chance to reset their offense. Over to West, right side. Picks up the dribble to Todd. Out behind the three-point line, over to West. Wants to drive. Shoves the pass over to Pruitt, now to Jeffers. Scott gives it up finally to Pruitt. Campbell County in a boxing one. They're trying to play the one against Trey Moore on him right now. Man-to-man -man is Horton. And the jumper by Scott Jeffers is good. Big three by Scott. That gives him two in the game. Timeout taken quickly on the floor. We'll, we better take a timeout right here with 7.04 to go. It's a 17-10 Highlander lead. I came up to our broadcast table pretty early tonight. I had some work I needed to do up here. And I didn't see the Highlander lineup. Uh, looks like Brady Strunk is not dressed out tonight. He's got a bad right knee. Folks tweaked it in a fall over at uh, Powell last night. And he, I don't think after the fall, I don't think he played any more in the game last night. So he's not dressed for the Highlanders tonight. Now we come out starting the second quarter in the full court press. Campbell County, they beat the press. Quick pass goes to down in the corner. The ball is deflected away. It's on the floor, tied up there. Hustling after Scott Jefferson, tying it up. It should be Highlander ball as the Cougars got the ball to start the second quarter. Highlander 17, Campbell County Cougars 10. 6.47 to go in the first half. The lob comes in to Moore, straight down the middle of the floor as he reaches the key right there. He gets fouled, but the official says Trey shoved off with the offensive foul. 13 foul against the Highlanders. Second foul against Trey in the first half. Coach says, I won't take any chances with you. You got in foul trouble. I think last night he had three fouls in the first half, so Coach is going to let him sit the rest of the half, I think. Driving in, they lob the ball inside, and John Long, that little touch pass layup is good. It's a 17-12 lead. Checking in, that would have been Braden Brummett for Trey over on the right wing, this is Brumman with the ball inside, posting. That's Gray Todd. Ball comes back outside. The Highlanders will work at the top of the key. Pruitt has a high screen. Wants to drive, tries to toss it back to Todd. It's intercepted by Campbell County. Off the wing, that's Bo Shears. Long, big three by Spencer Bo Shears. He tried a couple and had not made them before. And suddenly it's a two-point game at 17-15. Highlanders with the advantage. And then a foul, I think they'll call that on both shears. He and Jeffers going at it over on the other side. I only call it on Walden, so that was way off away from where the ball was at. Walden picking up his first foul. 14 foul against the Cougars. Braden Brummett trying to get the ball in, does to West. He was out on the left wing and he's going to be fouled by Devin Jones. Jones on the foul, a lot of body bumping, a lot of body pressure. Coach Clawson for Campbell County questioning the official, and he was told, you should stay on your bench. It would be Highlander ball with five minutes, 53 seconds left in the first half. The inbounds pass is stolen. Going down the court, that's long with it. 
Back outside, long high jumper off the glass, won't go. Scott Jeffers, the rebound for the Highlanders. Pushes in himself, kicks it left to Pruitt. Pruitt setting the Highland offense to West. Over to Pruitt, Pruitt on the right, excuse me, left wing, drives in, floating jumper off the glass, good by Dalton Pruitt. 19-15 Highlander advantage. Cross court, that's Bo Shears down in the right corner. As he tries to dribble out, it was stripped away from him, recovers, launches it to the left corner. That's Horton with the ball there, kicks it back over on the right side, long three there is good. That is Nate Walden with a three-pointer. It's a one-point lead again for the Highlanders at 19-18. West drives inside the foul line, a little fadeaway, 12-footer, good. That step shot by Luke West gives him four points in the game. And it's a 21-18 Highlander advantage. Highlanders with some full court pressure. Long lead pass goes to Boshiers. Did he travel? Yes, he did. Late call by the official, but he did get it right. You like that, Sam, when I give the officials credit for good calls, don't you? It's probably the last one tonight that I'll make that comment on. Highlander ball after the turnover. Pruitt, a little give and go bounce pass. It went to... Todd has to pick the ball back up and the Highlanders reset their offense. Pruitt dribbles around that screen, tosses it back outside, and there's going to be a foul as Dalton was driving to the left side. They call it on 55. That'll be John Long, his second. Four minutes, 27 seconds left, first half. Rummick gets the ball in to put left corner. Dalton outside to Jeffers. Rummick comes up, high screen. Jeffers couldn't use it, needs help. Walk with the ball, yes, should have been a call there. Hands off to Todd. Todd did walk with the ball to Rummick. To Pruitt, he lost the ball on the dribble. Lots of things happened to the Highlanders on that possession. Campbell County ahead in the front court. That's Boshears. Cut off, dribbles back out, reverses. Little driving, spinning, running layup there is no good. Dalton Pruitt has the ball in the backcourt. He's fouled two or three times. Takes it straight down the middle of the court over to Luke West from the right corner. Luke says, I'll try a three shot. Is no good. It's tied up there. Should be a, sorry, say should be a jump ball, but it is not a jump ball. The foul on Braden Brummett for the Islanders. His first, fourth Highlander team foul. 21-18, Highlanders with a three-point lead. Now Caleb Woodward will come in replacing Gray Todd. So Caleb Woodward in Coach Jeffers' rotation tonight since uh, Brady Strunk is not available. Cougars walk the ball across midcourt. Bo Shears gives the ball back to Atkins. Cross court and went to Horton. Horton dribbles out in the mid court. West on him. Bounce pass in the paint, working alone in Woodward. Picks up the foul, could not get the block as Walden makes the basket plus one for Nate Walden. It's a one point Highlander lead at 21 20. The foul was on Woodward, that will be his first. Now Trey Moore checks back in, replacing Braden Brummett. And Walden for the plus one, shot is short. Ball comes back outside, Jeffers holds it for the Highlanders. 21-20, Highlanders with the lead. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first half. Highlanders against the pressure by Camel County. West has the ball outside. Camel County in basically a man-to-man now. Skip pass goes over to the right, left corner rather. That is Scott Jefferson with the ball. Back outside to West. 2.50 to go in the game. Bounce pass to Pruitt. Loads up the three. Shot is no good. Ball is tipped up. Highlanders have it. That is Trey Moore. His jumper off the iron won't go. Tries for another tip. Can't get it. Gets the rebound again, and there's a foul inside. The foul on Campbell County, Spencer Boshears. And it looks like the Highlanders will get a chance to go to the line, shoot one plus one. That'll be Trey Moore at the line for the free throw opportunities. Now, I hope you're sitting down. I'm about to give you this stat. 
Two minutes, 39 seconds remaining in the first half. Trey Moore has not scored for the Highlanders until now. Gets the first free throw, and he has his bonus. 22-20 for the Highlanders. So that boxing one had some effect, and more than anything else, Trey picked up two fouls in the first half. Second free throw by Trey. That one also good. 23-20 now, Highlanders. Subs in for the Cougars. Checking back in is Devin Jones. He had the honor a while ago, I think, of playing Trey uh, man-to-man in that boxing one. Horton, David up right side. They work the corner, back outside, around to Jones. Jones gave it up to Horton. Jones will handle it outside. The Highlanders 2-3 zone, 2-3 zone. Jeffers and West out on top of the zone. Bounce pass to the left, right corner, back outside to Jones. He'll try a three shot, is no good. Long rebound, Jones gets it. Cut off along the baseline to the foul line. The 15-foot jumper is no good. Ball is deflected and got to be a foul, yes. A Cougar was over the back of Caleb Woodward. That foul on Jack Leach, number 10. That'll be his first personal foul. And Caleb Woodward gets to shoot one plus for the Highlanders. See now, back on the floor will be Gray Todd, along with Luke West, Dalton Pruitt, Scott Jeffers, and Caleb Woodward. Free throw rattles out, no good. Todd may have been over the back, no call by the official. The rebound control, Campbell County. They have it in the front court. This is Atkins, outside Horton, over to Jones. They skip it back on the right wing. Keeping it out on the right side. Now Horton outside, dribbles right. Long three-pointer from the wing is no good. Campbell County, they control the board, the rebound, 90 seconds to go in the first half. The pass off the hands, and Luke West tried to jump into the passing lane, couldn't get the ball. It disrupted Atkins a little bit, and he let the ball dribble off his hand. Now Trey will reenter the game, replacing whom? I'm not sure, Caleb Woodward. Coach already going offense, defense in the first half. 125 to go, Highlanders with the ball. There's that boxing one again over to West from the left wing. Pass up the shot, down to Todd. He drives up the right side, got the bump. Shot was no good, but Gray will shoot a pair of free throws for the Highlanders. Leach picks up his second personal foul, Gray Todd. At the line for the Highlanders, this toss up, no good. The Highlanders have shot two, three, four, five, five free throws in the first half, only making two of the five. Now Woodward in, more out for the Highlanders. Clock is stopped on the foul shots for Gray Todd with one minute, 16 seconds left in the first half. Second free throw is also no good. Ball's batted around, comes back out to Todd. Goes up strong with the shot, won't go. We'll be trying to keep it alive. Campbell County comes up with it this time. That was Horton with the ball. He'll handle it to the front court. 65 seconds remaining. Outside Walden, deep, deep on the right side. Has a screen there by Long. Kicks the pass over on the left side to Walden. His three is up and good. That's Horton rather, I'm sorry. Three-pointer by Horton has tied our game at 23 all. Highlander ball for the final 45 seconds. Swing pass goes over to West. He steps back, long three. Says, I can match that. And the Hollers on the Luke West three. Now back out on top, 26-23. And a blocking foul, I guess, called against Gray Todd. Is trying to drive there was Jones, and Gray picks up the foul. First on Gray, 16 foul against the Hollers. Non-shooting foul, as it was not yet one and one. Cougar basketball, 33 seconds left first half. They try to inbound the ball. They get it into Long in the paint, pump fake, and that little soft jumper from in front of the basket by Long, that gives him eight points for Campbell County. Now 26-25, a one-point lead Highlanders. We have the basketball, less than 20 seconds left first half. 
against the man-to-man. -the, -man. the Highlanders lucky as Dalton Put manages to steal the ball that got away from Scott Jeffers. Five seconds to go. Put wants to drive against two defenders over to West with a pump fake. The three up is taken out of the air. It's no good. At halftime, it'll be the Highlanders to the dressing room with the lead. And it's a very tenuous lead at 26-25. The Highlanders in the second quarter got outscored by the Campbell County Cougars 15-12. So we had a four-point lead starting the second quarter. The Cougars played very well. They were actually able to get back and tie the game at 23-all before the Highlanders had that three-point shot which eventually is at 26-25 lead. So that's the way we stand at halftime. We'll step aside. This will be an extended break. We'll add up the scoring. We'll gather our thoughts on the first half and tell you what the Highlanders need to do in the second half. When we return to Highlander Gym for a Highlander halftime, we'll do that after this break. Post, uh, not post camp, Highlander halftime show as the Grinch making an appearance in Highlander Gym to perform with the Highlander cheerleaders. And you can see that, man, good camera work over there, Cameron. Let's take a look at the first half scoring summary for each team. For the Campbell County Cougars, Devin Jones has three points. That only made three. Spencer Boshier has four points. They made three, one or two at the foul line. Nate Walden also made three-point shot. Seven total points for him. Bryson Horton with a made three. He has three points. John Long with eight points, the old-fashioned way on two-point scores. And Jack Leach played, did not score. 25 total points for Campbell County. Four made three-point shots and one of three at the foul line. <clears throat> now for the Highlanders. Scott Jeffers, two made trays in the first half. Six total points for him. Braden Brummett, two points, 0 for 1 at the line. Dalton Pruitt fin finishes the half with five points, including a three-point shot. Luke West, one made three-point shot, seven points. Trey Mora, two points in the first half, two for two. His scoring coming at the foul line. Gray Todd, two points, 0 for 2 at the foul line. And Caleb Woodward, two points, 0 for 1 at the foul line. 26 total points for the Highlanders. Four made three-point shots, two for six at the foul line. So between the two teams, they're not filling up the free throw numbers. But, hey, we're not shooting a lot of free throws either. That's pretty good. The Highlanders have one more game left this week. That'll be at Clinton on Friday night. Game time is at 6.30. Of course, that's a broadcast on the IH Sports Network from Clinton High School on Friday night. Well, I don't know if we've got permission, but we're trying to get permission to bring you a video live stream from Clinton on Friday night as the Highlanders travel for a district matchup against what many think is a very excellent boys basketball team. And some think that uh, the Clinton girls better than expected. We'll see when we play the two teams on Friday night. And then on Monday, it's the uh, South Fork Physical Therapy Christmas Classic at Oneida High School. Our Highlander girls and boys teams are playing up there as the girls will play at uh, 10 o'clock on Monday morning, 10 o'clock against Sunbright and the Lady Tigers. The boys will play at 5.30, I believe it's 5.30, against Woodbury Forest School out of Virginia. It's a private boys institution in uh, Virginia. So they're traveling, I don't know, three and a half, four hours to get here from Virginia to take on our Highlanders on Monday. Uh, then, of course, win or lose, you again play on Tuesday. Win or lose, you again play on Wednesday. So it's three games for each of our Highlander teams at the South Fork Physical Therapy Classic on uh, next week, the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. So we look forward to that. At this point in time, uh, we are not planning on broadcasting on IH Sports Network. But things could change. So just follow the Independent Herald tweet account or Twitter account, I guess, as it's officially known, and you'll find out if we decide to cover any of the games up there. And there's probably only one matchup one way or the other between girls and boys. One way that would happen, it's out there on the on Independent Herald website, ihonada.com or IH sports.net you can find the articles on that and like I say go to iSports.net at the bottom of your home screen there just scroll down the Twitter feed is there for IH Sports and look at that about an hour before well 
He posts it starting about 9 o'clock every day, which games are going to be on IH Sports. Uh, the Oneida Indians, they're right now, they're also on IH Sports Network <clears throat> from Jamestown as they're taking on York over there. So that game going on also. All kinds of ways that you can watch and follow the Scott Highlanders and Oneida Indians as we go through the 2021-2022 schedule. And pretty soon I'll be able to drop the 2021, won't I? I sure will. Uh, that's a look ahead for the Highlanders. Let's take this break. We'll take, um, let's take 60 seconds. We'll come back and get you ready for the second half between the Cougars and our home team Highlanders. Highlander basketball is for all ages, let me tell you, folks. We have another good crowd, capacity crowd on hand, not an overflow crowd like we have on Friday nights, but uh, it's great to bring the little ones out here from the time they can walk right on up. Uh, they get a dance with a student section, with the cheerleaders, and have a lot of fun. So from an early age right on up to, I know some guys in here that's older than me, so that puts them somewhere in their 70s or maybe 80s tonight watching Highlander basketball. Highlanders against the Campbell County Cougars. Highlanders have that one-point lead at halftime, 26-25 over the visiting Cougars. The Highlanders already have a win over Campbell County on the season. It was a little tight in the first half. The best I can, I can remember over at Campbell, oh, excuse me, over at Union County where we played over there after Thanksgiving. Then we'll see what the Highlanders are able to do with a couple of things that Campbell County has been doing. The Cougars, I'm pretty sure, did not do any boxing one the first time that we played them. First half, anytime Trey Moore was on the floor, the Cougars playing a boxing one. The one, of course, against Trey Moore. And to a certain degree, if we look at his scoring, no field goals for Trey in the first half. So quite obviously, the defense had some effect there and also had effect on the Highlanders as that's the first time we've seen it this year. I don't know if coaches practice that, but I guarantee between now and Friday we'll be practicing that. Most teams have been running man-to-man. Last night, Powell ran the zone and tonight the boxing one. Cougar basketball to start the second half. The three-point shot is no good. More of the rebound. While Trey maybe doesn't have any points, that's probably his sixth or seventh rebound of the game. Outside Gray Todd. Campbell County now, they open in a man-to-man -man in the second half. That's Pruitt back to West from the top of the key. Little running jumper in and out of the basket. It won't go. Moore gets that board for the Hollers. Turn strong, goes up. His shot comes up a little short, having a tough night at the field. And then... The ball is lost, picked up in the backcourt by Campbell County. That'll be Horton, and I agree with the Campbell County fan. We probably should have been assessed the foul. Long three off the glass won't go. Trey gets the defensive board once again. So we're just underway in the third quarter. Trey with already two de defensive rebounds and an offensive rebound. Out to Dalton Pruitt. He says, I've got it, guys. That's a three by Dalton Pruitt, giving him eight points in the game and a 29-25 Highlander lead. Highlanders extend now a 2-3 full court trap. Driving around, turning the corner, going in for the layup was Devin Jones. So Campbell County with the passing, and that's how you're supposed to defeat the full court press. They do it quite well, cutting the Highlander lead back to two points. West down in the right corner. There's that boxing one again. The player guarding Trey is Bryson Horton. Gray Todd along the baseline out to Jeffers over to Luke West. Pass on the three, drives to the foul line. Steps back, 15-foot jumper, no good. Balls last. Oh! The official made the wrong call, and he corrected himself. I guess he remembered which color was which. It will still be Highlander ball. Baseline extended for the Highlanders left side. Inbounds pass comes into Trey. Fights for it, gets the ball. Trey should have been called with a foul. That his shot is no good. Gets the rebound tip again. Finally, this time there is a made basket by Trey Moore, and he'll go to the line for plus one. I agree with the Campbell County fans. Trey probably pushed off. 31-27 Highlanders and Moore. Okay, Sam, I'll lean to your side. Could have gone either way. There was no call, so it went no way. That's even better, isn't it? Refs who don't blow whistles. What a novel idea. The 
official inside talking with a couple of players. We have call a foul on Bryson Horton after the official discussed it amongst themselves and then discussed it with each Campbell County player. Morris free throw up, that's no good. Long rebound, balls fall for it, batted around. Last touch by Luke West before going out of bounds. 31-27, Highlander lead, six minutes, seven seconds left in the third quarter. Highlanders with the press. Pass goes in the middle to Long. Crosses midcourt with it, takes it down, lobs it out on the left wing. The long three is good. Big three-pointer outside by Nate Walden. That gives him 10 points in the game and a one-point Highlander lead again, 31-30. For the Highlanders, West will drive along the baseline as he does so, tries to turn the corner, and Walden will hold him. That'll be second personal foul on Nate Walden, second team foul on the Cougars in the third quarter. Trey Moore to inbound for the Highlanders from the baseline, extended left side. Trey looks for somebody inside. Now West pops out on the left wing. His three is up, won't go, balls up, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Campbell County. I think the official pointed it long to say it went off of his hand. We'll try it again as Moore will inbound from the left base. Comes quickly into Gray Todd, turns, squares the three, bang. Gray Todd makes a three-point shot. The Highlanders will take a timeout. Our lead is now 34-30 Highlanders, and we'll stay right here. The official looks to see what we've got. Nope, Coach Jeffers only had a full timeout, so let's take the timeout with the teams. 34-30 Highlanders with the advantage. Welcome back to Highlander basketball on the IH Sports Network on Friday night. We got to this stage in the game. Sam and I sort of wish that the air conditioning was turned on. And we got our wish Friday night. We need that again tonight, I think. You're good? Okay. We don't need it then. It will be Campbell County basketball. Highlanders lead 34-30. We had the basket. We had the timeout. Cougars with the ball as Bryson Horton will be picked up midcourt by Luke West. He gives up the ball deep on the right wing. Saved over there by Boshears. Boshears looks for a bounce pass inside and long. Long kicks it back outside on the wing. Got it back top of the key. Starts to drive, walk with the ball. Back out to, to Boshears. Boshears goes in, and they're going to call. That's an over and back motion, so I don't know exactly. That was well in the paint right there, so it's a turnover. It doesn't really matter. It's high on the ball. Moore drives down the paint, 12-foot and running jumper is good by Mora. 36-30 now, Highlanders. When Trey scores, the rest of the team sort of loosens up a little bit. Driving down, that's Jones. Jones drives all the way in, got a nice roll on the layup, and Campbell County takes a timeout. 36-32. Highlanders with the lead will be getting the basketball when we come back from the Camel County timeout. A reminder, once again, the Highlanders play at Clinton High School. Girls game time is 6.30 on Friday night. A pair of district games for the Highlanders. Also a pair of games on the IH Sports Network. <coughs> well, you can tell I really don't have the crud anymore. It's just that doing back-to-back -back nights on the radio. My, I'm of the age. I don't do that very well anymore. But, boy, I enjoy Highlander basketball. Jeffers for the Highlanders in the Mora. Gray, Todd, Luke, West, Dalton Pruitt also on the floor. A handoff to Pruitt, deep right side. And in the right corner, that's West. Looks for a cutter. Could not get it to Todd. Back outside with the ball. Skip pass goes down inside. In the more. Turns inside. Has his shot blocked. Deflected. Saved by Jeffers. It went to a Campbell County player, however. Driving up the right side. Might have been a walk there as both shears. Tries a little soft shot. And then there's a foul on the rebound. 
Scott Jeffers picking up his first personal foul for the Highlanders. That will be our first team foul of the second half. Cougar basketball, baseline extended right side. Trying to get the ball in is Horton. Lobs it out top to Atkins. Over to Jones. Watch Jones when he's this deep. If you're not careful, he'll drive on you. To Long has his pocket pick. Got the ball back out to Jones. Starts to drive. Pushes Jeffers off. Flashes a pass inside, and there's a foul after the made basket. Walden with the basket, and he'll go to the line for that bonus free throw. A foul on the Highlanders, Dalton Pruitt, his first. Now checking in, that would be Caleb Woodward, again replacing Gray Todd. 36-34. Now make it 36-35. As Walden made the free throw. First made free throw of the second half by the Cougars. This is Pruitt, has a high screen, kicks it back outside on the wing, down to Jeffers in the corner. To West, West wants to drive, couldn't use the screen out there by Woodward, over to Jeffers. Wants to drive, has his pocket pick, goes after the ball, Scott's able to recover it in the backcourt, over to Luke West. Again, pass on a three-point shot. Luke gave it up, got it back, long three shot is no good. Woodward over the back, picking up the foul. Two fouls now on Caleb Woodward for the Highlanders. One point Highlander lead at 36-35. Three minutes, 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cougar basketball. To Long from the right elbow. Wants to drive against two defenders. Cut off. Ball goes to Jones as he starts to drive. There's going to be a foul against the Highlanders. Will it be on Jeffers? It is. Jeffers reaching in from behind. Picks up his second personal foul. Suddenly... In the last, I'm going to say minute, minute and a half, the Highlanders have picked up four team fouls. Cougar basketball trying to inbound. They get the lob in the long, shoves the pass back outside. Jones lost it, picked up by Woodward and the Highlanders. This is Moore into the front court. Spins against two defenders, shot is blocked, draws the foul. Moore will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair of free throws. 36-35, 36-35, Highlanders. Clock is stopped on the foul at three minutes, three seconds left in the third quarter. First toss by Trey. This is good. Two-point lead, Highlanders, 37-35. His second free throw. Up and also good. Nothing but net on that one. 38-35 Highlanders. Now the defense, we got a slow down Campbell County sign. Highlanders in that full court press once again. We back to a half court zone. And it's knocked away. Fighting for the ball, Caleb Woodward knocks it away a second time. It's tied up and a timeout taken by Campbell County. Coach Clawson with a play right in front of him takes the timeout. We'll stay here. Two minutes, 49 seconds to go. That one got the Highlander student section up off their feet. Well, I can't say up off their feet. They're on their feet the whole game. But it got them into the game just a little bit right there as Caleb Woodruff fighting for the ball. Had it the first time, stripped from him, fighting for it, rolling on the floor the second time. And I think our student section thought that Campbell County might have fouled. I have no opinion. Because they're down there, I'm up here. There we go. That's my segment tonight. Let the other shoe drop. They're down there, I'm up here. It's when we end up going to some of the Knoxville schools and you've not seen those officials, you don't know exactly how they're going to call a game. That was the way it was at Powell last night. Uh... Coach Jeffers now talking with referee Knight down on the court, talking about who called the timeout, who didn't call the timeout. The scoreboard has three Highlander timeouts remaining, two Campbell County timeouts. It'll be Campbell County basketball. 
from the right baseline. Quick pass goes in the long, short jumper. Shot is no good, picked up off the floor by Trey Mora. Ran around the defender, goes up the right side, fade away Jay from the baseline, spun in and out. Wilbert with a tip back up, couldn't get it to go. And now Campbell County with the ball along the baseline. Scott Jeffers strips. The Highlanders will reset the offense. Put wants to drive in. A fadeaway jumper for him, no good. Campbell County with the board as they start up the court. The Highlanders with a reach foul. That'll be on Dalton Pruitt. 16 foul, I believe, against the Highlanders. One, two, three, four, five. Just five team fouls against the Highlanders. Campbell County basketball, it's a 38-35 Highlander lead. Campbell County trying to get the ball in. They lob it to Long in the backcourt. Coming back to handle it will be Bryson Horton, number 24. Pruitt guards him man-to-man. Tries to force him to the right. Horton picks up the dribble, gave it up to Long. Back outside to Jones, has a screen. Drives around two Highlanders, running, floating jumpers, no good. Jones goes up, ball stripped around, comes back, blocked again. And somehow Long ends up with it. His jumper off the right baseline is good. John Long, 10 points for Long in the game. It's back to a 38-37 lead. Highlanders by one. Justin cannot get a big enough momentum, big enough roll going to pull away from Campbell County. Minute 42 left in the third quarter. Luke West drives from the top of the key, kicks it down to the left corner. Scott Jeffers, he'll load the three, shot is no good. Rebound goes to Jones and the Cougars. Takes it himself all the way coast to coast, lays it off the iron, it won't go. The follow inside by John Long. And Long has just given the Cougars a 39-38 lead over our home team Highlanders. Outside, the long jumper. Mora couldn't get it to go. Woodward was fouled from behind. His shot was no good. And the Cougars with the rebound now. Clock is down to 65 seconds left from the left corner. Driving in, the scooping jumper is no good. Now the rebound is Dalton Pruitt. Tries to get it ahead to Luke West. We throw it away and a turnover. Now Gray Todd checks back in for the Highlanders. 59 seconds to go third quarter. Cougar basketball, they with a one-point lead. Highlanders trying to defend. West, Jeffers, now Braden Brummett comes in, replacing Dalton Pruitt. Gray Todd and Trey Mora on the court for the Highlanders. Coach trying to give his players a break here. The game goes pretty fast end to end as both teams like to run. Jones outside, has a high screen, tries to dribble left, cut off the West. Has that high screen again, they want to run a screen and roll. Jones tries to drive around, West has his pocket picked by Mora. Trey up the right side, reverses back into the paint, draws the foul, he shot off the glass, is no good. I think the official said the foul was on the floor and there is there will be no free throws. Yes, that's what he did say. Foul was on Atkins for Campbell County, their fourth team foul. Highlander ball baseline, right side, extended from the Highlander basket. Trey Moore will inbound for the Highlanders. Comes out beyond the key. That is, or that was, Gray Todd over to Braden Brummett. Now Jeffers with the ball back to Brummett. He dribbles back outside. They'll call a block on Devin Jones. And Jones automatically heading for the bench as Horton checks back in. 26 seconds left in the third quarter. Jones has the three personal fouls now. Highlander ball as Brummett will inbound to Mora. Drives along the left baseline, lost his balance, now spins, goes back up. The fadeaway 10-footer is no good. Rebound for Campbell County. Ahead, had it out on the wing, Walden, now back at midcourt, 10 seconds to go. And off Boshers, definitely walk with it. Right back to Boshers, long three. That one it drains it ahead of the buzzer as Boshier is extending the lead by Campbell County. The Highlanders throw it long, cannot score ahead of the buzzer. We'll go to the fourth quarter with the visiting Campbell County Cougars on top of our Highlanders, 42 to 38. Don't go away, it'll be a wild one at Highlander Gym when we come back after these messages. Got some careful numbers to go over right here. 
the Highlanders had a 36 to 30 lead over the Cougars. And from that point on, Campbell County outscored the Highlanders 12 to two as they have built a 42-38 advantage. Four point lead, that is their, definitely their largest. But the stat right there was that 12 to two run by Campbell County and the Highlanders unable to stop the run and unable to score ourselves. We've had so many shots tonight roll off the rim, come up a little bit short, just not get there. It'll be Highlander basketball to start the fourth. Gray Todd, Luke West, Trey Moore, Braden Brumman, and Dalton Pruitt. Pru with the basketball. Draws a little bit of a double team. We work the ball all the way down the west in the right corner. He dribbles out. Wants to drive, cut off. Lobs it across to Pruitt. He'll drive along the baseline. His pass inside for Mora. Deflected, stolen, and then Trey gets it again. Spins up off the glass. Good by Mora. It's a Two-point game, Highlanders trying to get the steal. Takeaway of some kind from Campbell County. Diving in, that's Boshears fading away. His shot is no good. Over the back, getting the rebound, and a late foul on Gray Todd. 16 foul against the Highlanders. I think he might have fouled Horton. Nevertheless, it's Campbell County ball from their left base. They have a two-point lead, the basketball. It comes in to Atkins. They skip it over on the right side, down in the right corner. This will be Long driving the baseline, shoots over Todd and scores. Front court for the Highlanders. Put dribbles back out, dumps it in the left corner. That'll be Braden Brumman, his three off the mark, the rebound, Campbell County. We're one and done. On our offensive end. As the Cougars doing a good job rebounding, beating us to the basketball. Driving that's long, ran over the ran over the top of Trey Moore, the official over on that side, calls Trey with a block, however. 16 foul, now 17 foul actually against the Highlanders. And going to the line will be John Long to shoot one plus one. And the officials want to do some house cleaning. Six minutes, 36 seconds remaining in the game. Campbell County 44, Highlanders 40. John Long will go to the line. He's there to shoot one plus for the Campbell County Cougars. They are two for four in the game at the foul line. Long has not shot free throws for the Cougars. The toss up along is good. He'll get his bonus. 45-40 now, Campbell County with the lead. Long second try. That one is up. Good also. 46-40 now. Largest lead Campbell County has had at six points. The lob down to Brummett. Wants to drive along the baseline. Tries to throw it back outside. Saved by Todd. Ball's batted around. Finally picked up by Campbell County. This is a three-on-one fast break. The fadeaway jumper by John Long off the left side will give him 18 points in the game. And the Cougars extending their advantage to eight points over the Highlanders. And the Highlanders at the other end are going to get the three from Luke West. And Coach Jeffers takes a timeout right off the bat. 48-43, 48-43. Campbell County still with that five-point margin. And the Highlanders will try to slow them down. Campbell County, a good basketball team. Don't be mistaken by that 20-point win the Highlanders had earlier in the season. Because Campbell County is a good team. And now there is, there's more film out there to watch on the Highlanders. You can see that some teams have decided to tackle us tight man to man. Some teams, if they have the length and the quickness, they'll challenge us with that zone. Campbell County tonight, the first team to try us in a box and one. It has been effective. By the way, by my count, 
Trey Moore with 10 points in the game. I think that takes him to 2,400 points in his career. Once again, my numbers are not official. That's just what I checked later this afternoon as I was looking and adding up his scoring from last night, at packing that onto his total. From the Highlander timeout, it will be Campbell County basketball, six minutes, eight seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Highlanders two, two, one, trap press. Actually, it was more like a two, one, two. Outside with the basketball, Walden hands it back to Boshears. Boshears kicks it left. Jones gives it up. Horton drove around his defender, pulls up at the foul line. Three point shot, no good. Gray Todd the rebound. <coughs> Hounders on offense. <clears throat> Excuse me. West deep left side. Todd over to Pruitt. He'll try three. Got it. Back to back threes. Luke West and Dalton Pruitt. Pruitt's third three of the game, by the way. It's a two-point game once again as the Cougars have the basketball, the two-point advantage. Down in the right corner, Boshear spins, pulls up along the baseline, floating jumper is no good. Fighting for it and gets his own ball. Stripped away Scott Jeffers that time for the Highlands. Stripped it away from Boshears. Now Boshears all over Jeffers, tosses it into the front court, Luke West. Pass on the three-pointer. Todd from the left corner, ball comes back outside. Deflected, stolen, Jones, Jones up, drives, left hand layup is good by Devin Jones. 50-46, Cougars with a four point advantage, still 4.38 to go. The jumper by Todd from the foul line is no good. Campbell County, the outlet pass. They go cross court, driving in and going into no one, but Joe Carver standing over there. That don't count since Joe's not a basketball player. Checking in for the Highlanders will be Caleb Woodward replacing Gray Todd. Highlanders trailing by four. We have the basketball. Four minutes, 20 seconds to go in the game. There's that box and one. It's a zone around the paint. Trey draws the man coverage. Over to Pruitt. Steps back, launches another three, shot is no good. Ball's back tip, Luke West chases it down. Over to Mora, turns, spins, his three up, no good. Caleb Woodward got the ball. The Highlanders will reset their offense. West started to drive, lost it, got it back. This is Pruitt. He has an opening, drives all the way into the box, no good. Trey Mora has the shot block, gets it again, lays it up from in front. The Highlanders just were keeping the ball alive. Two-point game again. Cougars with the ball, two-point advantage. Highlanders trying for another stop. Long picks up his dribble, kicks it back outside. Horton holds it, guarded by Pruitt. Dribbles right, reverses back to the left side. Five-second count is on. He broke it. Over to Jones. Dumps pass to the left side and the layup. Little jump shot off the glass was good by Walden. Hunters try again to make it a two-point game or less. West pass on the three, pull up 16-foot jumper is no good. The Cougars with the ball. We've gone inside of three minutes. Cougar basketball, still trying to attack when they can. Over to Jones, Hunters zone. Tries to deny Jones the drive. They get it over to Long. Long cut off by Woodward. Ball comes back outside to Jones. He asked for the screen again from Long. Couldn't use it. Ran into Caleb Woodward, and Caleb didn't move. I don't know that Caleb tried to foul him. Caleb just didn't move out of his way. And that puts uh, Jones, I think, on the deck right there. Nothing intended, nothing bad, nothing intended by that foul. Stops the clock with two and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and Campbell County leading our home team Highlanders 52 to 48. <clears throat> I think more than anything else, it's just the way that, uh, if that is Jones, I scan the floor. That's who it is, just the way Jones actually landed. 
And he's up now, gets a hand from the fans here at Highlander Gym. Told you about the Highlander fans, respectful, courteous, mild-mannered, well-mannered. Good sports. And they love their Highlanders. We love it. <clears throat> Going to the line will be Spencer Boshears to shoot the one plus one free throw in place of Devin Jones. Now the officials want to talk about it a little bit. Jones did come out of the game and if uh, Boshears was out of the game, he can come in to shoot the throws and apparently he was out of the game so he gets to come in and shoot one plus. This toss up, good. Back to a five point lead for the Cougars. And Spencer Boshears trying to make both, he does. Six point advantage once again. 54-48, Highlander basketball. We can afford to take a little time. We still have some timeouts, but we've got to be in a little bit of a rush to take some good shots. Jeffers picks up the dribble, comes outside West. He'll try a three, shot is no good. Trey Moore goes up, had his hands on the ball, got hammered by a couple of defenders. They'll call the foul on John Long, not they. It's a referee will call the foul. And now Devin Jones back in for Campbell County. Six team foul against the Cougars. Highlander ball from the baseline right side. Long outlet pass comes to Pruitt. Pruitt is going to be fouled. Devin Jones stuck a knee out. They came back on on the floor, picked up his fourth personal foul. More importantly, that's the seventh team foul against Campbell County. <clears throat> Dalton Pruitt has a chance to go to the free throw line for the Highlanders. Each team shooting one and one on any, at, at least one and one on any foul by the other team. This toss by Pruitt, good, he gets his bonus. 54-49, Cougars by five. Dalton can make it four. Free throw up and good. A pair of free throws by Dalton Pruitt. Four point lead, Campbell County. Highlanders trying to get a stop here. Walden with the ball, lobs it into his own bench. The Highlanders create the turnover, it will be our ball. With now two minutes and a second left in the game. Scott Jeffers in the backcourt gets it into Pruitt. Pruitt will handle the basketball as Horton continues to play Trey Moore man to man. Trey with a screen. Pruitt picks up the ball over the west, skip pass, it goes to Jeffers. Wants to drive, cut off though, and might have pushed off. The ball comes back outside west, his three is up. Yes, spinning in for Luke West. One point game, 54-53, Cougars. Irons again with that full court pressure and Trey kicks the ball on the pass. One minute, 29 seconds left in the game. It'll come down, I think, to final possession. Thanks for tuning in on the IH Sports Network tonight. You've seen a good boys basketball contest, and actually it's a pretty close girls game. There's a timeout taken on the floor. We'll join the teams during this break. It's Highlanders 53, Campbell County 54, one point lead for the Cougars. We'll return after this message. Coach Jeffers is always pretty fun, and I am too to talk about the crowds following Highlander basketball. Last night over at Powell, we had as many people, and some people speculate, we had twice as many spectators watching the Highlanders as the home team Powell Panthers did. So we have good crowds at home. We have good crowds that follow the Highlanders for each game. It'll be Campbell County basketball from midcourt. Scott Jeffers, Trey Moore, Luke West, Gray Todd, Dalton Pruitt on the floor. 90, actually 89 seconds to go in the game. The entry pass into the backcourt to Horton. Pruitt's on him back there asking 
Walden to come up and handle the basketball. Moore will be on him man to man. High screen. Gives up the ball deep in the left corner to Boshears. Boshears hands it back outside to Jones. Jones has a screen cut off by West. 65 seconds to go in the game. Jones again with it out on the left wing. Picks up the dribble back to Long. Campbell County playing a keep away game. And we've got a very late whistle over there. Call against Trey Moore for the Highlanders. I don't think he was on the ball, but he reaches in and picks up the foul. That was being send uh, Nate Walden to the foul line. He is one for two at the foul line tonight. It is a one and one situation for Walden. The free throw spun out, no good. Trey Moore with the rebound, 50 seconds to go in the game. Highlanders trailing by one point, 54-53. Over to Jeffers, down in the left corner, West. Back outside to Jeffers, to West once again. He tries to get the ball to Trey, it's touched. Last touch by a Cougar player out of bounds. Went off of Horton, it'll be Highlander ball baseline left side. Sub in for the Cougars, 35 seconds remaining. Moore will trigger Highlanders. Looks for Todd underneath the basket, needs help, lobs to West out near midcourt. West picks up the dribble. Moore has it deep on the left wing, deep. 25 seconds to go. Trey wants to drive, spins in the paint. The fading jumper is good by Trey. And the Highlanders have the advantage by one, 55-54. Timeout taken by Coach Jeffers. We'll stay here, 19 seconds to go in the game. Morris scores by working in the paint with a shot over a couple of defenders. A little eight foot, it's not a baby hook, it's just that little high one-handed fade shot that Trey has developed and worked on so hard. Now it's all up to the Highlander defense. They have got to slow down, they've got to stop Campbell County. Each team, well, I'm going to take it back right now. The Highlanders with nine team fouls. So if they were to foul, that would put the Cougars at the line for the double bonus. On any Cougar foul, the Highlanders at the line one plus one. That is, of course, player control fouls. I looked at the official and he says, <clears throat> each team with one timeout remaining. <laughs> 19 seconds remaining. Gray, Todd, Luke West, Scott Jeffers, Trey Moore, and Dalton Pruitt. They'll come out and put pressure on the Campbell County players in the backcourt. Now this will be more of picking up Walden inside midcourt. Walden has the basketball, wants to drive to the left. Drives around Todd, drove against two defenders. The shot was blocked, fighting for the ball. It's saved by Long, gets it into the baseline. Now back outside, Long shot ahead of the buzzer. It is no good, and this game is over with as the Highlanders defend well enough in that final 19 seconds to pick up an extremely tough, hard fought, right down to the last second victory over the visiting Campbell County Cougars, 55-54. I told you that it would, I thought it would be in a good fourth quarter coming up. Uh, you never know, I, would, I said that, might have said that last night too, and the other team won, but tonight the Highlanders, well that, Final basket by Trey Moore to give us the 55-54 lead. And a big happy crowd leaving Highlander Gym tonight as the Highlanders have their 10th victory on the season. The Highlanders are now 10 wins against two losses. And the Cougars are now three wins against six losses. Good night of basketball for the Highlanders. We'll tell you more about it. Let's take this extended break. Let's take four minutes anyway, Sam, if we can do that, okay? We'll take this big break and be back with the Highlander post game. Welcome back to our Highlander post game wrap up. A uh, pair of good games here at Highlander Gym tonight against the visiting Campbell County Cougars. 
As we turn the clock back, looking at the Lady Highlander game earlier this evening, it was Campbell County. They took a 10-2 lead at the end of the first quarter. Highlanders fight back, outscoring Campbell County in the second quarter, only trailing by four points at halftime, 19-15. The, not much scoring really by both teams in the fourth quarter, but the Cougars able to extend their lead to eight points, and then it was, I think, tied up 14-14 uh, scoring in the fourth quarter. But the Cougars prevailed by eight over our Highlanders, 41-33 to tonight. The Lady Highlanders led in scoring by Zoe Terry with nine, Rachel Garrett with seven, Julia Lawson, I'm not Julia, I don't know why I say that, Julie Lawson with five, Brittany Moore with four, Elena Duncan with four, Annaline Woodward with three, Jalen Young with two. That is the scoring summary for the Highlanders tonight. As the Lady Highlanders with the loss, their overall record is now four wins, nine losses on the season. Non-district game, but we'll travel to Clinton on Friday night to play a district game. The boys game finishing up just moments ago. At the end of the third quarter, I'm going to say two minutes, two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. The Highlanders had actually came back, fought hard, built a 36-30 lead over Campbell County. And then zip, that was gone, and zip, Campbell County had more. They outscored the Highlanders on a 12-2 run to take a 42-38 lead to the bench at the end of the third quarter. So the Highlanders went from six up to trailing by four at the uh, end of the third quarter. And then throughout the fourth quarter, it sort of goes like this. Campbell County had the lead at 42-40. They led by eight points, 48-40. to Hunters, I think, had a three-point shot. We keep working. We cut it to 48-46. The Cougars score another basket. We cut it. We score another basket, cut it to two points again. The Cougars up by four, then by five, then by six at 54-48. The Highlanders got a made free throw, making it 54-49. Another free throw, 54-50. A big three-point shot. And then a regular two-point shot by Trey Moore, the last made basket by the Highlanders. That gave us the 55-54 lead. We had to defend Campbell County for the final 19 seconds. Even though they got a couple of shots at the basket, they didn't go in. And the Highlanders in there. Uh, hands, arms, legs, and knees any way they could to try to prevent uh, the basket from going in for, for Campbell County. So the Highlanders defense on that last possession, but another close game for the Highlanders as we have now won our 10th game on the season. For the Highlanders, our overall record is 10 wins against two losses. Let's look at the end of the game scoring summary for Campbell County. Devin Jones finishes with nine points. They made three in the first half. Spencer Boshears with nine points. Um, got to change my math right now. He had two made three-pointers, three for four at the foul line, and that would give uh, Campbell County – I'll get to that stat in just a minute. Boshers finishes with nine. Nate Walden finishes with 15. He had two made three-point shots, one of three at the foul line. Bryson Horton finishes with three points on made three in the first half. John Long finishes with 18 points. He had eight of those in the first half, 10 in the second half. 54 total points for Campbell County. They had six made three-point shots, and they were six of nine at the foul line. For the Highlanders, for the Highlanders, Scott Jeffers finishes tonight with two made three-point shots, six total points. Braden Brummett with two points, 0 for 1 at the foul line. Dalton Pruitt finishes with 13 points. Good night by Dalton. Three three-point shots, 2 for 2 at the foul line. Again, Dalton finishes with 13 points. Luke West came, came on strong in the second half, especially there in the fourth quarter. He finishes with three made trays, 13 total points for the game. Trey Moore finishes with 14 points, 4 for 5 at the foul line. Gray Todd with five points. They made three-pointer in the second half, 0 for 2 at the foul line. Caleb Woodward with two points, 0 for 1 at the foul line. 55 total points for the Highlanders. Nine made three-point shots. And in the second half, the Highlanders were 4 for 5 at the foul line. And trust me, folks, we needed every one of those foul shots. For the game, we were 6 of 11. The Highlanders defeat Campbell County in a very tough, rough, and sometimes physical game tonight, 55-54, joined by Highlander head coach, Jordan Jeffers, and Coach, thanks for joining us. Let's be sure I got your mic turned on. Yeah, you hear me? I got you fine there. All right. The uh, Highlanders had a tough road to hold tonight. 
I mentioned throughout the course of the broadcast, we've seen a lot of things, tight man-to-man, zones by lengthy teams. First time we've ran into the boxing one so yeah, far in the season. Time, first time we've run to it this season. We, you know, we've had we've been boxing one a few times on Trey, uh, and had a had a pretty good gut. You know, not not really gut feeling. We had uh, we had a pretty good idea that maybe it was coming. And mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you, I thought we'd handle it a little bit better. I thought with that, um, you know, I thought I just I just thought we'd handle it better. I thought we would uh, space the floor a little bit better and. Uh, do a better job taking care of the ball. We had just a bunch of silly turnovers early. I think we had mm-hmm. five turnovers in the first quarter, and uh, we had ten. Uh, we had ten shots, five turnovers. So ten possession or fifteen possessions, and uh, five of them ended in turnovers. So I mean, you know, in, in Campbell County, Grant, you know, uh, credit to them, they slowed it down and they made mm-hmm. it really tough and wasn't going to allow us to get up and go out and go. And our press didn't bother them near as badly tonight. I mean, we got a few things off of it, but. I don't know if we got out of it uh, more than they got they the buckets they got out of it. I mean, then we gave up and you know we knew it was going to be a war, but you know I don't know that our guys knew that and I and I and that bother that bothers me. But uh, you know we knew that this thing mattered to Campbell County. I think that we thought you know we went and played them at Union County. There's mm-hmm. nobody in the gym and beat them by 22 and didn't. But it's way closer than that. I mean, it was a one point two point game at halftime mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. You know, we made a three, a half quarter to even get it to, to have the lead. We should have been down one at halftime. Right. And I, you know, our guys is – I know we're playing a back-to-back. So was Campbell County. I mean – Right. Uh, and, our, I don't know, our sense of urgency, I, it's not been exactly what I, where I'd like it to be tonight or last night. I thought that uh, – you know, I, I think we fight and we try to give ourselves a chance. Just like last night, I thought we'd just pick these moments when we thought it was really important to give ourselves a chance and – same thing tonight. It was, you know, we'd just kind of jerk around and then, you know, kind of pick a moment to like, all right, let's go. Let's be serious now. And, and you just can't do that. I mean, we stole this one tonight. Ernie Mack and, and Brandon, they outcoached us. They out, I mean, they outplayed us for the most part. I mean, they got more offensive rebounds than we did. And, you know, they had a better game plan. They took Trey out. I, I just didn't I didn't, I didn't, didn't believe it. I didn't think a boxing one would take Trey out of it like right, that. Right. Um, because at the end of the day, it's still one-on-one. And as long as our other guys are spacing and taking care of, you know, doing their job, and uh, and some of that, you know, some of that's on Trey, some of that's on me. I did, we didn't have a good enough plan. We didn't have, we didn't talk about it much today, and uh, you know, and, I, and, that, and that happens when you have back to back games it like does, this Monday and night and Tuesday night. You don't have time game. to work you know, on. We, yeah. we don't watch, we watch, we watch film. We don't, but we don't put together a paper scout. And it ain't like, you know, we're not setting the boys in front of, you know, it just is these these games. These they're. Uh, you know, they're really about just, you know, just playing and, and figuring it out and trying to, you know, it's it's not like, it's not practice. It's might, way more important than, uh, you know, and more intense than, you know, really than a practice, but it is it is practice. You know, it's kind of like you're just, you know, it's a, a you know, they, they're scouting a little bit, we're scouting a little bit, but you're know, just trying to you're trying to do what you do and, and try to do a good enough job to give yourself a chance to win and, we did. I mean, we did that, and we won the game. And I'm not. And I'm never going to apologize for winning the exactly. game. And, and then we made the plays to win. And I feel. I do feel like we stole it. Uh, but you know, I think we probably got away with a foul here to end the game. And mm-hmm. rightfully, you know, they were upset, and rightfully so, in my opinion. But uh, you know, it's just. Uh, you know, just you know, just even if the, you call the foul, doesn't necessarily mean the game ends any differently than it did. I mean, you still got to go. You know, the game's got to play out. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, you know, I, we start, we came into this week averaging 80 points a game as a team, and uh, you know, the so, averages took a hit. So far this week, too. we've scored 42 and 55, yeah. and uh, that ain't all because people's guarding Trey differently. That's you know because our we've got other, you know our other guys aren't doing a great job of just being fearless and shooting the ball. I think you know Luke West has got to be fearless in firing that thing. He's he's the best he's the best catch and shoot shooter. I've ever coached three point. I mean, he, outside of Goody, Logan Goodman's number one, and, and I've told Luke Luke's number two, and uh, from a guard, you know, and Luke Goody was a big. He's a little bit different, but uh, you know, sometimes he's just got to shoot it. I mean, he's got to be willing sometimes to take a bad shot and uh, not let it affect his next shot. But um, coach, I I sense tonight, and I could be wrong, but I, you're starting to lead in that. I sense some night tonight some tentativeness on our part. Yeah, we're going to watch film. I told him. I thought that I thought Dalton Pruitt. I thought Dalton Pruitt played fantastic. Like, you know, he turned it over a little bit, but he stepped in, made some big shots, and he guards so well on the ball. Uh, he gave us a chance. I mean, if Dalton Pruitt don't show up tonight, you know, we ain't got a, we. You know, this game ended a long time ago, and this interview's already happened. But uh, you know, he gave us a chance tonight. And but like, you know, we're gonna watch films. Luke and Scott. I would we. You know, 
Derek thinks I'm under I'm underselling or underestimating. I would say fifty percent of their dribbles are backwards. I mean, you watch the game tonight. Right, I mean, it's right. you know it's two dribbles forward, four dribbles back, and the game keeps going to their direction. Like the game keeps going back to the half line, and you know, and that to me that 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 just you know that's just that's just a mindset thing of not being in attack mode. And I also thought that you know there was a stretch there where we just kind of got wide-eyed with the fight, like that it was going to turn into a dog fight, and like almost that we were too good for that. Because, you know, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, you know, to play well and, mm-hmm. and to, to not just beat, you know, not just win by one. But, you know, we, you know, we've won a lot of games this year by double digits. and But some, not every night's like that. Exactly. And we're not too good to be stuck in a dogfight. And Campbell County's good enough to give us a dogfight. And I hope that we're good enough to give it back. But uh, I told them in a timeout, I said, hey, get in the mud with them. And, you know, and fight back. And, you know, we – I think we did. I think we was more aggressive out of that timeout, but then you know it's you know it's you know we miss a couple shots and we just, we just don't bounce back from that stuff. We're not real mentally tough as far as missing shots and keeping you know bouncing back. You mm-hmm. know, uh, Luke and you know Luke and Trey have to shoot it. You know we know that, um, but then there's times you know Pruitt was Pruitt was was aggressive tonight and we need him to be aggressive. There's times we have three guys on the floor that are just absolutely unwilling to shoot the basketball. You know Scott. We saw Ray, that last night. You know, Pruitt at times. We put Brummett in the game. You know, Brummett's, Brummett's just – they're just not willing shooters. And uh, that is really hard when there's film out there of us and people are able just to load up to Trey and just All make right. it – throw bodies at him. Um, and know that if you just close out, they're not going to shoot it. Exactly. Um, and that's – you know, that's incumbent. That's mine and Derek's job. we got to fix that. And we've got to be able to find some things that – you know, so I get. I bet you this. This is our twelfth game this year. I guarantee you, we. This ain't the last time we see boxing one. Well, I guarantee. I, I, I guarantee you that. that. I thought Halls really wrote the book a couple of weeks ago when they came out and showed that really hard man to man. And I told people after that, I said, I think Halls just showed the other teams what to do. Yeah. But you know, not all teams have the personnel to play that. That's exactly right. You know, yeah, Pal, right. Pal had the length yeah, to play the zone last night. Let me tell you what else they had. They had the toughness. To oh, gosh, hey, yeah. it's tough. It's tough to guard 24 tonight. I didn't know. He's tougher than I thought he was. All right, because to do that to Trey Morrow for 32 minutes is hard. And, he, I mean, he did it and did a great job. You know, mm-hmm. but out in the other side of that, I thought that we played four on four basically all night. Right. Just Trey would just go stand at the block or go stand in the corner or go stand on the wing. And we didn't make a concerted effort to get him the ball. And, you know, sometimes, you know, and I, because, you know, I don't know, we feel like sometimes we have to, you know, it's kind of tippy toe around feelings, you know, but because uh, we're still, de- we are dealing with people and I, we understand that. But the best player in the gym has to have the ball in his hands. Exactly. At the end of the day, a boxing one still man to man on mm-hmm. one. Um, and then let him make decisions. And we, I, we didn't do that. I didn't do that. We finally started getting him in some ball screen action and where we try to get two on the ball. And, it, you know, it makes it hard when, when you're not willing to switch off because they didn't want to switch 24 off of Trey. They wanted to keep 24 on Trey. Um, and, he, I thought he did a, I thought he did a good job. But, you know, I thought we just kind of did enough things there late. And, you know, we didn't win this game because of offense. We won this game because we battled our butts off defensively exactly. and gave ourselves a chance. Exactly. And uh, that's one thing I appreciate about this basketball team. It ain't pretty. It's ugly at times. And we're not, you know, I don't think we're – I've said it. We're not as good as we're going to be, and we're not near as good as we think we are. And uh, we're not near as good as everybody around us thinks we are. Right? There's a, and I, I told our guys in a timeout tonight, I said, take a breath. Take a breath. Because the expectation, the, the weight that we put on our shoulders, it's too much. You know, we've not earned that yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, we think that, you know, tr- you know, Trey, you know, he's getting, you know, the pressure, you know, he he, he rushes shots because if you get the chance to shoot it, you know, it's like we got to shoot it, you know. And, yeah. and instead of, you know, him doing his, you know, shooting his normal, you know, his normal rhythm and his normal follow through, he kind of, he rushes things. And I, I understand that. Um, and hopefully the next time we see this, maybe hopefully we'll handle it better than we did tonight. Um, but. At the end of the night, we're not going to apologize for wins, and this was a Heck really, no. really good win at our at our gym before we go to Clinton on Friday night. This was I ain't gonna say it's a must win because you know it's it, it, it's December, but uh, this one was pretty close to you know a much a must win as you can get in December because of uh, well, you didn't you did not want to lose two in a row. 
Well, yeah, uh, because, against I mean, four A teams. I mean, yeah, they are four A teams. You're look at going at three and up this week, zero yeah. and three this week. Yeah. If you don't find a way to win tonight, and um, you know, I, I feel bad for Ernie Mack and Brandon. I do because I, I really like those guys. They're really good guys. I have a lot of respect for Campbell County and Cody Parker, the coach at uh, at Jacksboro, and Ken Weaver, the coach at LaFollette. Them guys support us and they come to all of our camps and stuff. So I mean, I'm really good friends with them guys and really think a lot of them. And uh, you know, I, I, do, I, I do. I told him I feel like I stole it from him. Uh, but you know, that's we'll get uh, they'll get that chance to get one back on. We go there, man. Christmas. Yes, indeed we do. Hey, it's a great crowd tonight. Everybody indeed have a was. Merry Christmas. We don't see you. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get a piece of the Indians up there at at, a, at their Christmas tournament. But if not, I uh, hope everybody has a good uh, Merry Christmas and uh, hope everybody gets to have uh, time with their family and just enjoy just being, and, being at home. Indeed we do, Coach. Awesome. Thanks very much for joining right, us thank tonight. You. Thank you, Rick. Go, Scott. Unfortunately, the Lady Highlands fall tonight. The boys win by one in a very tight, tightly contested and physical game at times. And so we'll be on the road Friday night to take on the Clinton Dragons in girls and boys games. That is a district game. Not only is it the next game, that's why it's important, but it's a district game. So we'll be on the road. I Sports Network, if you cannot follow the Highlanders in person, we'll have that game coverage for you. 6.30 for the girls game on Friday night. That's it for our coverage of Highlander basketball tonight. As always, support the sponsors that support our programming, bringing you Highlander basketball. We'll say good night, Scott County. See you from Clinton on Friday night.